congregation, please stand. Good morning, everybody. I want to take the opportunity to welcome you to this service as we come to celebrate Joey's life. And um, as we come to draw closer with scripture readings and singing some beautiful hymns, and but most importantly, coming to celebrate the life of Joey. From myself and the leadership of St. Hughes, I want to extend uh, sincere sympathies and condolences um, to Sandra, to Andrew, Craig and Robert, and all the family, all those who loved and cared for Joey, and um, to all the friends and extended family, um, to you as well, my sincere condolences to you as you, as you come to mourn the loss of a, of a human being, somebody who was present in your life, but also as you come to celebrate her life. Without much today, I'm going to start off with some scripture verses and these were selected specifically because they give people comfort in a time of mourning. So listen to what God says to us from these scripture verses. The eternal God is your refuge and underneath are the everlasting arms. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Eye has not seen, nor ear heard, nor the heart of man conceived what God has prepared for those who love him. We believe that Jesus died and rose again, and so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. Amen. Let us sing that beautiful hymn, Amazing Grace, and you will find that at the back of your pew leaflet.
Good morning. Very familiar faces here, but I don't know their names. And uh, a lot of familiar faces. I know their names. I know them. They know my name. <laughs> so, you know, and it's a horrible time to come together and then see everybody and think, gee, where did they fit into my life? Or where do I know them from? Because the only time you see your family and friends and everything is at a funeral or at a wedding. But then no kids get married in our family and they have to out of. Auntie Jo goes, <coughs> if I have to do a eulogy, where do you start? I first thought it was an obituary, and I thought, no man, nobody wants to listen to an obituary. So I just um, wrote down anything that came into my head. And those who know me know that there's not much in my head, so here we go. Joey was the youngest of a family of eight daughters. Her dad, Barry Slammer, was so desperate for a son that he persisted with extending the family. And Joey was number eight, and Rolinda was number nine. Uh, she unfortunately died at the tender age of about 18 months. And being the baby in the family, Joey was really much loved but she was never indulged. She got the paddywax, even though she was the little baby. Nobody had any uh, uh, feelings for this little thing. If she stamped her feet, she got it. And her dad died early, young. I think he was 47 when he died. But he made sure he had a whole lot of kids before he died. And poor old granny, Stayman had to raise these kids by herself without having a job. And so she got hold of her good old sewing machine and that's what she made her living from. And she made a good living from it. She worked day and night. And having all these kids, um, they didn't sit around like the kids of today watching TV and stuff like that. They weren't such luxuries. They worked. There was no other way. And she made an amazing success of her life, even though she had to do it by herself. And now, after knowing that, you know where Joey comes from. Joey also had to make it by herself. Tom died at 46, I think. Robert was four months old. Joey was left alone to raise four kids by herself. She had no job. She also had to scrounge around and find jobs here and there. She had a very hard time, but never did you hear her complain. She never complained. She just took it. That's my life. And she was 10 years older than me and about five years older than my brother Mark sitting there, you're supposed to be doing this eulogy. <laughs> and, and Granny insisted that Mike call her Auntie Joey. We had to call her Auntie Joey, but she was just a little bit older than us. And that was a huge embarrassment to her. She was always embarrassed uh, when we called her Auntie, especially in front of her friends, that they laughed the heads of that one. And then Granny, after a long trick, she married Grandpa Tippy. And Grandpa Tippy had kids of his own, adult kids. Uh, Yvonne was the youngest, and then there was Johannes, and, um, oh, I can't remember her name. Yuna. Yuna. And she taught at the school for the deaf. And they were only there in holidays and so on. But Yvonne, she was mad and was she full of things at that one. And she and Joey built up a huge friendship. And it was, it was great for Joey to have somebody of her own age. And they, I think they had a very nice uh, young adult life in Granny's house. I can remember going there on Saturdays 
my mom would go and visit Granny, and then there would be these two young women washing their hair, and Yvonne used to use a thing called Marchant's Golden Rinse. I was absolutely enamored with all these things, and then I, I found out it's not, I thought it's Martians Golden Rinse, and I thought, where the hell did they get this from? From Mars, you know, Martians Golden Rinse. But then it was Martians, Martians Golden Rinse. But poor old Shane. Um, and, then, and then they all went their own way. And Charlie, oh, they went to, to, to do ballroom dancing. They took up ballroom dancing. And that was the beginning of the split. The beginning of the split because. She, Joey, met a tall, slender young man from England at the ballroom dancing. And, well, then Yvonne wasn't always nice to have Yvonne around. She just wanted to be around her tall, slender young Englishman, Tom. What a magic guy he was. Everybody loved Tom. Neither nature similar to Joey's, and he also had this amazing sense of humor. We all loved Tom. And so they, they uh, got married and they went off on their own. I think I must give that one <laughs> But I remember uh, another thing is this, the sisters. They were so, so fond of one another. They were such a, a close-knit group. And they, it, it was marvelous because they, they never went on weekends to friends. No, they went to their sisters. They visited each other. I think they didn't have many outside friends for the simple reason that they had each other. They had a lot of sisters and they had a wonderful time. And I can remember stopping outside my grandmother's house. The front door always stood open and there was this dog trot passage right down into the kitchen. You could see into the kitchen. And I just heard this raucous laughter, raucous. And I thought, what, what is going on in there? In the meantime, it was just these sisters playing Scrabble. But uh, the plunk was on the table, and uh, they were eating snacks, and they were arguing about every single word. And um, yeah, but they were laughing their heads off. And when I was at college, uh, I had a friend that came down often on weekends with me from college for a weekend, and she often went with me to my granny's house on those weekends. And she said to me one day, "I don't understand your family. They're always laughing." Why are they always laughing? I don't know. They think everybody else is funny. But they were always laughing. Two bobs. Always laughing, yeah. And, and I think that's a wonderful quality for people to have. And, and us grandkids, we also laugh a lot. I'm called Grootbeck. Yeah, I laugh a lot. And learned from these, from Yvonne and, uh, and um, Joey, nail polish and all that stuff. I, I just idolized them. They, they, were, they were great. They were like big sisters to me. And then Joey, Joey and Yvonne used to go to the Feather Market Hall. In those days, the Feather Market Hall, um, everybody went there, the kids, they played music and in this big arena at the bottom, um, they did roller skating, and it was great fun. All the, the, the teenagers and the older teenagers of Port Elizabeth, that's where they went. Innocent fun, they did roller skating and, and even dancing. And I always thought that was great, and I know Mike got a pair of roller skates somehow. Mm, I didn't get one, it wasn't fair. But in any case, then, um, Tom then caught a Joey, and then us 
kids became a nuisance afterwards, and then they got married in this very same church. They got married here. Joan's dress was so beautiful, her wedding dress. Granny made it. It was sophisticated. It wasn't just a frothy mess. It was sophisticated. It was full length, satin, um, with a, a sleek full length satin dress with a fitted full length coat. She got married in the winter. It was so beautiful. She looked so sophisticated and she looked like sort of a vision drifting down this aisle. Oh, my mouth just hung open. I can, and I'll never forget that. It made a huge impression on me. And my mom, Madge, that was the eldest of the tribe, used to say that Joey looked like Ava Gardner. And I don't know that any of you knew Joey when she was young. Yes, she did, you know. She looked like Ava Gardner. And then Tom came along for the ride and they would pick up Mike and I and take us with him sometimes on the outings in Tom's Jeep. So, yeah, we had our little outings with him. And then their family started. First it was Pooch. Pooch was black spaniel. What a character. Then came Sandy, then came Andrew, then came Craig, and then a while after came Robert. When Robert was, as I said, four months old, Tom unfortunately passed away. Just terrible blow to everybody. Now life got tougher on Joey. She had a hell of a hard time. Single-handedly she raised his four kids and it wasn't a joke. But Jo always took it in her stride. She was just one of those people. And she smiled. She always had a smile, not only on her lips, but a smile in her eyes. It was this inherent goodness in her, because that's who she was. She was inherently good. And that used to always be shown through her eyes. Even when we knew she was having a tough time, she remained sweet and loving with a smile. Such a resilient and yet gentle soul. When she retired and Andrew acquired the house in Kakakama Retirement Village, she settled into her nest. She loved her little home and the years spent there were exceptionally happy. For that, we are all grateful. And thank you, Andrew, that you did that magnificent thing for your mom. Joey's passing is the end of an era. The sisters, Madge, Dorothy, Francis, Sharisa, Brenda, Gertie, Abigail, and Joey, formed the most amazing band of little women. I am blessed to belong to such a family. And all our cousins, I think they've all got that something different, that, that gutsiness of, if you say you can't do that, they'll say, try it. And they do it in any case. Thank you, Joey, for being my auntie. You were so loved. But then it was not hard to love you, Joe. Rest in peace. I'd like to do some acknowledgements. I won't speak as long as I've just spoken. I've been gushing again. Sandy and the boys would like to express their gratitude to so many who assisted them along this long, grinding path that they walked till Joey succumbed to the awful illness. Thank you to Andrea leading the service today, Andrea. To the church for giving us time to hold the service here, and also the staff for so willingly helped with everything. 
Thank you for all the messages of sympathy and condolences. Thank you to Andy and St. Luke's Hospice. Not you, Andy. You weren't in St. Luke's, okay? Um, that stood by me and my mom in our time of need. All the WhatsApps and the help and the medication, the compassion and the chats, people really came and gave a little bit of themselves to help Sandy and Joey along this path. And thank you to our mom's friends at the complex who loved and visited her often, especially Felicity, Jenny O and Jenny B, Lynette and Ray. They are all my family now. That's what Sandy says. And thank you to the frail care. Um, Ilsa, Ilsa Lloyd, and all the carers that help Sandra with compassion and kindness when she needed them, and to all her family and friends who contacted her regularly to find out if she was coping. Thank you to all who traveled to pay their last respects to a wonderful woman, our mommy, Joey. And thank you to Andrew and Elise from Kramer Funeral Home for making my load lighter by arranging everything with so much compassion. And to Yvette and T who prepared the walk for them, for the tea, and to anyone who I have left out, please forgive me. But you know who you are and your contribution is truly appreciated. And that comes from Sandy. Andrew, Craig, and Robert. Thank you. Thank you so much, Doreen. I hope my nieces or at least one of them will speak so highly of me one day when I get my angel wings. Um, so thank you for sharing around Joey's life. And um, yeah, memories are so important. I think the wonderful gift of memory, remembering, is so important. I mean, even Jesus says we must remember him. And um, so remembering is very, very important. I'm going to continue with a prayer and then um, will a family member be doing the reading or would you like me to do the reading? Would you like me to do the reading? Let us pray. And I want us to unite with this prayer which Jesus taught his disciples and this prayer also gives us comfort as we come together. Our Father who art in heaven, I'm going to ask you to join me, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Continue in prayer, Almighty God, neither death nor life can separate us from your love. For the whole company of the redeemed in heaven and earth, we praise and magnify your glorious name, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, blessed forever. Amen. I'm going to share with you a reading, and I'm sure you're familiar with this reading. It's from Ecclesiastes chapter 3, beginning at verse 1, ending at verse 4. And the heading and the title of this reading is, A Time for Everything. There is a time for everything, and a season for every activity under the heavens. A time to be born and a time to die. 
a time to plant and a time to uproot, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to build, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance. Here is the reading. I'm going to go into the pulpit and I'm going to share a few words with you, words of encouragement. I speak to you in the name of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verses 1 to 4. Jesus says, before he addresses the crowd, and for those of you, I don't know how many of you actually know me, I, I don't know anybody, I don't only know Sandra, but I start every sermon or homily which I prepare with the following words, and these are Jesus' words, pay close attention to what you hear. The closer you listen, the more understanding you will be given and you will receive even more. Pay close attention to what you hear. The scope of the verses in Ecclesiastes shows us that you and I, we live in a world of changes. There are several events in time and conditions of human life and one event of time and the condition of life is different one from the other. And we are continually passing between them. In the wheel of nature, there is a constant ebbing and flowing. We have the seasons waxing and waning. The world changes from one extreme to the other. And I think in the UK at the moment it's quite cold. It was quite cold. Um, my nieces were saying, Auntie Andrea, we, or Auntie Andy, we're just trying to get to 10 degrees the first winter in the UK. And so the world changes from one extreme to the other. It did so in the past and it will continue to do so. The changes concerning us in the times and seasons are fixed and are determined by a superpower. They are determined by God. And so we must take things as they come because it is not in our power to change what is appointed to us. I just heard when the season changed in Joey's life, when her husband passed away, I think it was Robert and I, right? four months, three months, four months old, she said, that is life. And you know what she did? She got on with it. And so we cannot change it because things change and it's out of our power. And we accept when those changes are pointed to us. And so because we live in a world of changes, we must not be secure in our successes, nor cast down in our fears. Cast down in our fears, but instead with steadiness of mind, expect every event. Can you hear Joey in that? With steadiness of mind, she the event came and she got through it. Because every purpose has its time. You see, joy comes after sorrow and clouded skies will always clear. The things of this world which seem most casual and we think are dependent on other things are in fact directed by God. And as a result of the wisdom of God, every season is determined in good time and the exact time is fixed and can neither be anticipated nor delayed a moment. And so there's a time to be born and a time to die. These times are, de are determined by divine direction and as we were born, so we must die at the time appointed. I always encourage folk, with every hello, there is a corresponding goodbye. Luke writes in the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 17, verse 26, From one man he created all the nations throughout the whole earth. He decided beforehand when they should rise and fall. He determined their boundaries. 
Some observe that there is a time to be born and a time to die, but no time to live. That living is so short that it is not worth mentioning. But we are here to celebrate that portion of Joey's life and also celebrate that she is with her maker. Some say as soon as we are born, we begin to die. I'm reminded of the poem, The Dash, written in 1996 by Linda Ellis. Anybody ever hear this poem? Listen to this poem. I read of a man who stood to speak at the funeral of a friend. He referred to the dates on the tombstone from the beginning to the end. He noted that first came the date of birth and spoke the following date with tears. But he said what mattered most of all was the dash between those years. For that dash represents all the time that they spent alive on earth. And now only those who love them know what that little line is worth. For it matters not how much we own, the cars, the house, the cash. What matters is how we love and love and how we spend our dash. So think about this long and hard. Are there things you'd like to change? For you never know how much time is left that can still be rearranged. If we could just slow down enough to consider what's true and real and always try to understand the other people, the, the way other people feel, and be less quick to anger and show appreciation more, and love the people in our lives that we've never loved before. If we treat each other with respect and more often wear a smile, remembering this special dash might only last a little while. So when your eulogy is being read with your life's actions to rehash, would you be proud of the things they say about how you spent your dash? And you know what? Today is the first day I've ever seen in a pew leaflet, little memories shared by family members. And I thought, profound. Because that is how Joey spent her dash. And the family members were acknowledging her dash. How she learned, I'm getting all goosebumps and it's quite hot under this. You see, everyone has a beginning and everyone has an end. The dash between the beginning and the end seems short for us who are left behind, but it is long enough for our Heavenly Father who welcomes us into paradise. The dash is significant for a believer because as the dash symbolizes our lives, the way we conduct our lives are meant to lead us to be with Christ forever. And so you see, we are here remembering Joey in a church where she got married, and you know the gown she wore on the wedding day, she's looking even more stylish now than she'd ever look. We are here remembering Joey in a church before God because Joey chose Christ. So we know that she is in paradise with our Lord and Savior. And the challenge is for you and me. Who do we choose as we continue to live out our dash? with the end in sight. Amen. And we're going to sing a chorus, a hymn now, with that question in our minds. Who are we going to choose to walk with, with the rest of what our dash, the mm -hmm. dashes, our dashes, okay? Let us stand and receive just a closer walk with him.
Father, we thank you for the life of Joey. We thank you for the incredible memories. We thank you that she set an example of walking with you, Lord, particularly in those difficult seasons. Thank you that she leaves this legacy of persevering despite her season. Thank you that she leaves a legacy of a smile that went a long way. Thank you for her life. And Father, thank you that she was a woman of faith, and we know this because she pursued a, the covenant of marriage in a place of worship. And Father, because she was a woman of faith, we know that there was a promise to the thief on the cross, we acknowledge Jesus as Lord and Savior, that today you will be in paradise. And we know that Joey, as a believer, is in paradise with her Savior. Thank you for the memories again, Lord. Thank you that those memories, they give us comfort in a time of mourning. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Eternal God and Father, whose love is stronger than death, we rejoice that the dead as well as the living are in your loving care. And as we remember with thanksgiving, Joey, and all those who have gone before us in the way of Christ, we pray that we may be counted worthy to share with them the life of your kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord. Lord Christ, you spoke words of comfort to your friends Martha and Mary in the hour of sorrow. Give consolation and courage to those who mourn today, and may they find their peace and hope in you, the resurrection and the life for your tender mercy's sake. Lord Jesus, you are the image of the invisible God, the firstborn from the dead. In you we have redemption and the forgiveness of sins. Keep us firm in this faith, setting our hearts on things above, so that when you appear, we too may appear with you in glory. To God the Father who loved us and made us accepted in the Beloved, to God the Son who loved us and loosed us from our sins by his own blood, to God the Holy Spirit who sheds the love of God abroad in our hearts, to the one true God we all love and all glory for time and for eternity. Amen. And that concludes the ceremony. But don't forget to hold on to the legacy of Joey. She was a believer and she persevered. I think those are powerful um, qualities to remember in your mom your grandmother, your aunt, your friend, your neighbor. Let us stand for the final blessing. And I want to remind everybody that tea and refreshments will be served at the Klachakama Retirement Village, number 32 Ralston Road in Fern Glen. Be blessed. <laughs>